Figuring out the shots for a one-man short film was a challenge, but here's what I did. Truth be told, there aren't many parts of doing a one-man short film that aren't a challenge because you're on your own. You're doing everything in front of and behind the camera. It's important to pace yourself. That's one thing that I discovered. I didn't want to cram everything into one weekend. I didn't want to try to push myself from a time aspect as hard as I could because I knew that I would burn out and probably not finish the thing. I kept lighting very simple for my setups in each of the rooms for the short film. Of course, I filmed it in my house, so I kinda knew what angles I had and what I thought I could do, but I really just tried to be original. I really tried to, to see what I could do with the camera, things that I wouldn't typically do on other short films that I've done. If you've watched the short film, you know that there isn't really much camera movement when the character is on screen because I can't move the camera and be on screen at the same time. I paid extra attention to framing and composition because that was really all these shots had to rely on. I love moving the camera and it really, really stressed me out that I couldn't do that. I do have a DJI Ronin, but Again, I wanted to keep these setups ultra simple so I wouldn't get frustrated with the equipment and always having to set up every little thing when I went to go film. It really just made actually completing the short film attainable. Most of the short film was shot with the camera on a tripod or sometimes it was just resting on the counter. And in other cases, it was propped precariously up in positions that I probably shouldn't have put it in. Here you can see I have it propped up using a what looks like a plug-in adapter and some other things that are giving me the angle that I want. Real safe. Another interesting camera setup that I thought was in the bathroom. This particular bathroom has two sinks, so I was able to sprawl the camera over one of the sinks with the Gorillapod, shoot it back towards the other sink where I was filming at, used a beer bottle to get my focus correct. Then I just perched one of my LED lights up in the towel rack, perched precariously that is, and then I used the lights that were in the bathroom as part of the setup as well. At one point I had the camera upside down in the sink to try to get the shot. It was some good times. For the lights in the kitchen, which was the main set piece of junk drawer, ultra simple. Just flip a couple switches and I'm good to go. So I had the practical light of the desk lamp that I tried to keep in some of the shots just to establish that it was there. And then that allowed me to play with the angle of the light when it wasn't on camera. So that was really handy. And then the lights in my kitchen were another factor. One back by the sink was always on. The other light that's in the kitchen was off. So that was kind of the main two lights. I got a nice warm tungsten light from the practical light that was in the kitchen and then I made sure that the desk lamp had a cooler light. I believe it's a compact fluorescent light that I put in there. I tested a couple of different light bulbs before shooting. I did use my LED lights in the kitchen also just to provide a little bit of uh, backlight in some shots. You can see in this picture I have it hanging up on the cabinets with a gorilla pod and shooting back down towards me. So there were some shots that I did utilize that to help get me some more backlight and help separate the character from the background. Super simple. I did do a few test shots to kind of see what kind of mood I wanted to go for. I wanted to go for something a little darker, a little more ominous, and I think that that really comes through. One thing I also think that helped the cinematography on this one is I paid extra special attention to what was happening in the background of each of the shots. Of course, I just kind of wanted those things to fade off into the distance and be very generic so that we could keep the focal point on the main character. But the wall in the kitchen does not typically look like this, so I really just kind of put some random things on those shelves. Usually there's some commemorative beer bottles or other things from breweries on those shelves. Those had to come down because, you know, copyrights. I just found some random things that looked shelf worthy and put those on there and just kind of cleaned up that wall a little bit and made it, I think, a nice blank canvas. One more thing I would stress when it comes to cinematography if you're doing a one-man short film is coverage. Coverage is key to keeping things interesting. Remember, there's one person 
on camera this entire this entire story how do you keep that moving how do you keep the audience engaged is to try to switch the shot up as much as you can and keep that pace going after each shoot i would go back and edit uh, the things that i had just shot and i began to notice very quickly that i needed more coverage and editor me was super thankful when i started paying more attention to coverage hey editor nate here just wanted to pause the video real quick to say can confirm. So overall, I really think that the cinematography in Junk Drawer was successful. Now, of course, I did have to occasionally make sure the dirty dishes in my sink were conveniently out of frame or out of focus. Hey, stay tuned for more behind the scenes videos on my one man short film. Thanks for watching.